Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite Gimp with a Limp, and uh, welcome to my messy ass desk where the uh, the magic happens all over here. Uh, I put out a video recently talking about GW and Warlord games and all that good stuff, and I was talking up uh, Warlord games while hating on GW, which has become kind of a pastime of mine now and many others because they're making a shitload of bad decisions. Here's the thing, though. Uh, I had gotten my first little kit of bolt action stuff, and I was excited and wanted to tell you guys about it. And if I recommend something, I feel responsible to you guys when I push something, right? I feel like I, I owe you the most honest opinion of it that I can give. So there's, there's the, consider this a little update, and there's some good, there's some bad, and I want to make sure I'm, I'm telling you guys the truth of things, right? So just in case you didn't see it, I had picked up this big boy island assault the new starter kit for uh bolt action by warlord games obviously now there's a lot of good stuff in this box but the big thing that we're going to be focusing on here if i don't mess it all up is talking about this stuff the 24 infantry for the marines 24 infantry for the japanese all right now we're going to touch on the vehicles a little bit as well now here's the thing when I had talked about the the stuff that comes with it, I was under the assumption that everything you see on the box, you know, kind of comes with it. Now, of course, there's some basic exceptions. I, if I see painted miniatures, I don't expect the miniatures to be painted. I know they're going to come as little uh, put together kits. I mean, grab them little things. I've been putting together some infantry. Obviously, I'd already put together the the couple of vehicles. I know that's part of it, right? I know I'm going to have to put these little suckers together. Here's a little sniper that I've been working on, finishing up. Uh, but one of the things that's always kind of been understood is that when you say there are this many infantry, well, there's going to be that many bases because you can't really, I mean, I guess you could have infantry just like that on the table, but you kind of expect to be able to, to base them, right? They've even got some uh, infantry have been putting together here, trying some new grass uh, techniques, you know, some new stuff. Cool, right? Uh, evidently, with bolt action, that's not always the case. And I felt like I kind of needed to, to let you guys know that just in case anyone else is in my shoes. That way, when you open up the box, you're not going to be caught with your pants down, kind of like I was. So with this, that's 48 infantry total. They come in the box. That's fine. There's plenty to get yourself started. A couple of uh, factions warring. You guys are going to be seeing that once I get these guys done and painted and up and everything. It'll be a little while before I get them done, but uh, fun to work on, right? Some World War II stuff. Uh, here's the thing. They only include 40 of these little bases, little plastic bases, and these work perfectly fine uh, in the box. So you're eight short of what you need to actually make the miniatures that they show. And I wouldn't care except for the fact that they show that on the box. And I would assume, just like many others would, you know, that these would be in there, right? Because this is what's shown. Now, I understand that sometimes things might not be there. If you want to do a, a weapons team on a, a 60 millimeter round base, that's not shown here. So obviously that's not included, but these bigger flat bases, these are shown. I, I fully get that they're not going to have grass on them. They're not going to be base like this, but just a flat plastic piece for me to put my guys on that should be in there. That should be in the box. I've never had a war game before that did not include those types of components into the game. Now, I'm fortunate enough that I can 3D print out whatever I need. So, I mean, I've got a little stack here of bases that I found that I'm trying. And I actually like these cobblestone ones better. So I made up some of these. I think that came out pretty decent. Uh, painted a couple of the stones, put on a little grass, you know, in between there. I'm going to line them up with a, a little brown, maybe mixed with a little black, something like that to get the, the lines to stand out just a little bit more, you know, but this is me. This is me taking the time uh, to do this for some extra bases 
but I think that these should be included. So these are 25 by 50 mil bases, the round bases. And these are ones that I just downloaded off of Thingiverse and printed out. And obviously they're not expensive, but you've got to have a 3D printer to print those. And you can't really just have any 3D printer. I guess you could do them on an FDM printer, but you really need a, a resin printer to make these actually decent. Uh, you could, like I said, do it on the other, but uh, it's not, it's not going to be that good. I don't believe, but with resin printers, you can get stuff like this out. Nice little, uh, terrain pieces. So these are some sandbags I printed out and just based real quick with, uh, some primer. I'm going to finish those up later as well. So you have the option to expand your game as much as you want. But I found that as kind of a little bit of a, a kick in the teeth that all the components that I needed to really start getting these guys put together were not included. Now, to be fair, I did contact them, like I said, uh, to offer them the, the chance to say something about it. And at first, when I contacted them, I expected to uh, get back an email saying, hey, there was a sprue missing from your box, you know, that was supposed to have these bases on it. Sorry, we'll send that to you. Uh, but I actually never heard from them. And I, I hate saying that, but I gave them uh, over a week uh, to respond to it and still haven't heard anything back. And I'm not going to sit on it forever because I do have that video out already. And that's got me pushing people to uh, try out bolt action, which I still recommend because I think the pros of bolt action far outweigh the cons. So if the, the biggest con that I can draw right now is the fact that they don't include a, a necessary component. It's not the end of the world because it's relatively easy to either make or get bases. You can even carve your own out of thin MDF, uh, MDF or um, uh, that plasticine boards. I mean, it's not hard to make your own bases. Uh, paint them up, doll them up, put whatever you want on them so you can make the game your own. I just find that as... Like, really, why? Why would you not include, at least, if you're not going to include these, enough of these, right? Two more sprues would have been enough to handle all the infantry that are in the box. And I'm like, really? You guys couldn't have included at least enough round ones? It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, a, an oval one if you don't make those or you don't have easy access to them, whatever. That's fine, but at least include enough of the, the basic round ones uh, to, to fill out all the infantry. That that caught me by surprise. That's like buying you know space marines and not having enough bases in the box to uh, take care of all the space marines that are in the box. I, I've just never seen it before. Now, others who have played the game more than me might think it's a, a common practice. And if I'm wrong, let me know. But to me, it was a very odd thing to have those components missing. But on the flip side, for other advantages, you know, there are things that are included in the box, obviously, like we've got our half track here for the Marines and the tank that is for the Japanese, right? I think this is the, I can't remember. I know this is the Type 97 or the 95. I think the 97 is the bigger one, but I've got the smaller version, the light tank version here as well. And this is one that I printed. And tell me, you can really tell the difference between these two, with the exception that this uh, turret isn't mobile like this turret is, but easily, easily in the same ballpark. Obviously this tank's bigger, but this is a bigger tank, so it's gonna be larger. But 3D printing has gotten so good now that you really, really can't tell the difference uh, with them. And especially once you get them painted and on the board, they're going to be looking good. I went and made another uh, half track for the Marines, just in case I want to have this vehicle to use. And this has got a 40 millimeter Bofors on the end of it, which is awesome. This one does look a little bit more different. I think the detail obviously is just a little better on, on the manufactured one than the 3D printed one. But once I get these painted, on the table, you're really not going to be able to tell. I mean, you really just can't tell a difference. Uh, make sure if you do 3D print these that you are careful. Things like barrels are a lot more fragile when they're made of resin uh, versus this. But that is one of the benefits that you're going to find with a game like Bolt Action over 
uh, games like Warhammer is that World War II cannot be patented, right? So these vehicles can't be patented. It's very, very easy to find uh, components to expand your game with. They're easily downloadable on the internet and you can basically print off whatever you want to print off to expand your game and not even just the vehicles, but stuff like this as well. The, uh, the terrain aspects, these actually came with the, uh, the box game themselves, the little pill boxes here. I like this one. Nice big underground pill box. Got some wall pieces that I'm working on, but you can expand the game however you want to. And in fact, I like, I like these cobblestone bases better than I like the bases that come with the game because the ones that come with the game are just plain. So this gives me a lot more expandability for what I'm doing versus uh, some of the other things, right? I can do whatever I want, make it look that much better on the table. Plus the book that comes with it, the, the manual gives you a buttload of information. And the back of it, there's a lot of unit information in here. So you have access to a lot of the information you need to run the 3D printed stuff that you've got going out. You're never gonna have that type of access to stuff, uh, GW type stuff, right? They're, they're never gonna give you access. Uh, one book that has all the factions listed, let's see, it's got it here at the front. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, Imperial Japanese, uh, Soviet Union, Great Britain, United States, Germany, and it's the four selection and it lists down all their different stuff. Now, of course, this is gonna be good to time of printing if they come out with newer units, newer rules, whatever. That's not necessarily going to be in here. Uh, they do have books that are specific, like US book or German book that's gonna have, I think, better and better organized information. But this, with this, you don't necessarily have to have that. If you want the extra materials, you can get them, but it's not a requirement. With something like 40K, you can't play a faction without having the codex. So you have to have the rule book. You have to have the codex. You have to have all the extra little accoutrement. You can't make it as much your own as you can with bolt action. And I, I kind of like the way bolt action plays a little better than uh, 40K too, because you don't have to worry about cover saves. That gets all into it. But you guys will see that when we uh, get into the game itself. But yeah, I'm ranting here a little bit. I don't want to go on too long. Uh, I did want to update for those who are looking into bolt action uh, a little bit of this information. Uh, just be aware, especially if you're getting infantry packs, that you're not necessarily going to get uh, enough bases. So either buy some extra bases or make your own if you have that ability, if you do have a printer, because these are easy as hell to print out. You can make a bunch, a uh, bunch, bunch, bunch more versus the cost of what you're gonna be spending in uh, resin. So yeah, definitely 3D print them if you can. I do need to add as a nice little addendum, or not nice, but a little addendum to that. Uh, I did mention that the models, GW models, for example, are better and the manuals for putting them together are better than the ones you're gonna find in bolt action. If you do have any experience putting together models, things like this, like this just gave you basic pictures of how to put it together. It didn't have numbers or letters, but it was not hard to put together. You could fairly easily understand how it's gonna to go together. The, the instructions are a lot more simplistic for these models than they are with others. So if you do have a little experience with models, uh, more than likely you'll be able to get checked through it, but otherwise take your time, make sure that you're lining your pieces up uh, correctly before you start applying the glue, otherwise you might make a mistake or two. And obviously since they are a little bit smaller, like I said previously, Things like weapons are a little more brittle and easier to be broken off. I mean, it's not like 40K doesn't have uh, thin pieces that can be broken off as well though. I mean, if you look at this many here, standing on a single foot with a sword hanging out and long ass hair, this could easily get broken just as well as this. So it's not like that's uh, 
a bolt action only problem. That problem can be with any of the models, but it's just gonna be a little bit harder to put these together than it is with the others. If you have any, any semblance of intelligence though, you can definitely muddle your way through without too many problems. Uh, same with the infantry, since they do give you the ability to kind of pose the infantry however you want, it, it makes it harder because there's no set put arm here, put leg there as far as putting infantry together, but you do have so much more freedom in how you do put them together. Now, this kit did come with a uh, instruction booklet that says make these infantry and it shows you the poses that they're in, which makes it very easy to decide which pieces uh, to put to which part, uh, how to build them so you have a set squad that's ready to go you know, right out of the box. That I do appreciate them doing. It made it a lot easier when it came to the infantry. Rather than just going off of this, which just lists down all your pieces and uh, hey, figure it out. Hope it works for you. This is generally what you're gonna get if you just get infantry, but just to show you guys, this is what came with it. And it shows you build these two, then build these two then build these guys and it lists down the the types, what weapons they're having, all that stuff. So you can easily see the, the parts and how they're put together to make the squats that come with this box. But again, that's the thing. <laughs> they show these bases, but they're not in the box. That's the big thing that I wanted to let you guys know about. Like, why would you show something that you that you didn't include? Why? Why would you make that choice? That is a bad choice. Don't do that. Bad Warlord Gates. If you don't want to include all the bases, fine. But don't show them in your instruction manual because then you're going to have me going through it going, where the hell are those bases? Now, if I end up being wrong and I do just have mine missing, if they ever contact me back, I'll let you guys know. But as of now, I haven't heard from them. And from what I could find online, it seems these are not generally included. So just be aware of that if you do get the set. For those of you who are looking forward to seeing bolt action, trust me, I am too. I'm going as fast as I can getting things ready, but I want it to look real good on the table. I've got some nice terrain pieces I am putting together uh, to set up. I'm gonna have a nice little battlefield between the Marines and the Japanese and I think you guys will enjoy it. And I definitely recommend Bolt Action as a game, right? The I think it plays very well, nice and simplistic. Uh, doesn't get too bogged down in the rules. It's a fun game. It's not so basic as beer and pretzels, but it's not so hard that it's gonna take you days and days and days and days to, to learn all the specifics. Yeah, you got heavy machine guns, light machine guns, armor piercing rounds and what modifier and how thick the armor is real easy to understand. You guys will see that and it's not like there are plenty of videos already online showing uh, the game in action for a good cause. It's a good game. It's definitely worth checking out. All right, but if you guys have any comments about it, feel free to put it down below and let me know. You guys take care. I'll see you in the next one.